Hey guys, Davin Lim, Board Certified Dermatologist. Today's video will be talking about red acne scars or post-inflammatory erythema, PIE, also known as macular erythema, which are type one flat acne scars, which is a difference compared to treating acne scars, which may be raised, they're called hypertrophic scars, or if there's red together with depression, that's called atrophic scars. So for those type of scarring, the algorithm is very different. The algorithm is different for scars which are pigmented. In other words, if you have hyperpigmentation. So this video is concentrated on the super common, or in fact, one of the most common scar types, which is your post-inflammatory erythema or your post-acne red marks. So guys, just to summarize, how common is it? It's very common. It's about 20 to 25% of patients. It's more common with um, acne that's more severe. So if you're looking at things like pimples, zits, pustules, cysts, you usually get a little bit, a bit of background erythema. It can occur with comedomal acne, in other words, whitehead and blackhead acne, but it, it is less common. The downside about PIE, even though it's more flat compared to atrophic scarring or hypertrophic scarring, which is heaped up, red scars can be really resistant to treatment. So the whole aim with any treatment is to place your acne in remission during or before treatment. So in other words, get your acne treated by either a physician or skincare specialist or a dermatologist doesn't matter how you get the acne treated, whether it be skincare, your retinols, your fluffy stuff, your beta hydroxy acids, your scrubs, um, your tea tree oil, your meditation, your diet, your zinc, just as long as it's under control, um, it's you're in the right direction. So from there, what you need to do is protect your skin. So we know that PIE or post-inflammatory erythema is more common in patients who have a lot of sun exposure. So the use of sunscreen, something like a non-comedogenic, in other words, a non-occlusive sunscreen, a physical sunscreen used twice a day as directed will not stop, but it markedly or can markedly mitigate the chances of post-inflammatory erythema or red scars. Because once you have established red scars, the algorithm to treat those is a lot more complex. So once you've done your sunscreen, you can add your topicals. So what topicals do we prescribe? Most commonly, if you're gonna try something, it'll be vitamin B3 or niacinamide. Niacinamide is super cheap. You can buy these, I think from the ordinary, they can sell a big jar that you can pre-mix and it costs something like, realistically, 10, $15. So in other words, each application should cost you between 30 or 40 cents at most. So if you don't want to mix your vitamin B3, you can buy formulations. And the formulations, there's many out there. There's everything from Paula's Choice all the way up to higher end brands, which may cost 100 or $200. What you want to look for is a formulation ranging from 10 to 15 to 20%. So if you have sensitive skin, you might want to try it something like 10%, but because niacinamide is such a banal treatment, it should not cause any problems, even for patients with a compromised skin barrier function. In other words, those who suffer rosacea, acne, eczema, vitamin B3, generally speaking, is well tolerated. So for B3 is my go-to. From there, you can add azelaic acid. Azelaic acid is a naturally formed acid it is anti-inflammatory, but this also has very strong anti-pigment roles and also can reduce the amount of outbreaks. So you might want to do something like azelaic acid during the day, vitamin B3 at night. You can use retinol, but the downside about using too many, um, I guess, actives is that it may cause some inflammation and hence make your redness worse. So patients with sensitive skin, be really cautious about your vitamin C and your retinol. So we talked about niacinamide, that's my number one. Number two, azelaic acid. Number three, literature has shown that ascorbic acid with vitamin uh, C can help. So you're looking usually at the formulation between 10 to 15% L-ascorbic acid. You can go up to 20% L-ascorbic acid. L-ascorbic acid works by decreasing the amount of pigment, but it's also a free radical scavenger. So once you reduce the amount of free radicals, you can decrease inflammation, you can mitigate scarring, and you can certainly reduce redness through modulation of inflammation. So we've talked about the skincare environments. What else can you do? Dermatologists like to use uh, lasers. So the lasers that we use are vascular lasers. Vascular lasers target the hemoglobin and target the blood vessels which cause the redness. And usually these lasers consist of something like a pulse dye laser with a 595 wavelength, a 532 KTP laser, or a new solid state laser. But it also has different effects because the laser itself not only decreases the redness, the laser can cause some skin remodeling. So that can increase the amount of collagen and hence the lasers work in the way where it stimulates collagen, thereby increasing the thickness of your skin, decreasing the visibility of the show of the red, 
but at the same time targeting the red. So that's the advantage of lasers. So we talked about the 532, we talked about the 595, you can have a 585 laser. You can have a long pulse in the YAG, so a 1064 laser, because the long pulse in the YAG laser can go deeper, target more um, vessels deeper in your skin, but at the same time, especially when you're using things like laser genesis, stimulate collagen production. So vascular lasers are my go-to. From there, if you don't have a vascular laser, you can treat it with IPL or BBL. So certainly using a red filter, somewhere in the 600 nanometer range uh, or the 500 nanometer range can target the um, red vessels. So if you don't have lasers, certainly IPL, BBL can be helpful. From there, what else can you do? Um, from there, generally speaking, dermatologists would uh, prescribe compounded topicals. And the compounded topicals include things like, um, for example, bromododine, which is an old medication. It's also known as Mavasa. We use that in the treatment of rosacea, really resistant cases of rosacea. The downside about it is that you're using a topical medication, which can work, but the downside with that is that it may cause rebound uh, erythema. Now there's rebound redness, which is very common in rosacea, but less commonly seen in post-inflammatory erythema scars. So we talk about bromododine, Mavasa, it's another one that was, is T acid, the transactamic acid. That has gained popularity over the years, partly because of the skincare craze. Generally speaking, oral medications do a lot better than topicals. When you're looking at oral medication, you're looking between 500 to 1000 milligrams a day. The downside about T acid taken orally is that caution needs to be exerted. It is a prescription medication and certainly side effects can occur. So you need to clear up your case with a physician or a board certified dermatologist prior to going on tea acid. It's a prescription only medication. There's a lot in the literature in regards to tea acid topically. So transamic acid topically can modulate blood vessel uh, production, reduce inflammation. Usually the uh, concentration is between three to 5%. Uh, and nowadays it's pretty easy to get, get. So like five years ago, tea acid had to be compounded. Now. A lot of skincare companies um, make it. So you're looking, just Google 5% transamic acid and you use that once to twice a day on the red lesions. So we talked about bromodidine, we talked about compounded transamic acid or transamic acid you can buy over the counter. Um, another drug that has been recently uh, reported is something called Timolol. Timolol is a beta blocker and it's often used in uh, glaucoma. So ophthalmologists use it a lot. This has been shown to be very effective in red scars. So it's a topical application. You can use it up to twice a day. There is a recent paper on the use of Timolol together with TCA or trichloroacetic acid to treat deep scars. And they say that that can be more effective than treating TCA by itself. And the reason why it's more effective is possibly because it decreases the amount of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and erythema. In other words, redness within the scars. So, Timolol, it's a prescription medication. If you're really resourceful, just type in Timolol drops, um, just Google that, and you can find it in a lot of pharmacies um, overseas. So often you don't need to see a dermatologist for that. And generally speaking, because it's a topical medication, it's often side effect free. So from there, you're really clutching at straws. We talk about lasers, we talk about IPL, we talk about topicals, we talk about prescription topicals. From there, I think the algorithm is really hard because there's no one set gold standard to treat PIE. Um, <clears throat> for resistant cases, what I normally do is I do a cyclical treatment of something like a corticosteroid, like an anti-inflammatory, whether it be a, um, a mix of topical corticosteroids. Uh, you can alternate that with a calcineurin inhibitor, something like tacrolimus at 0.1% to make sure you don't have any steroid-induced atrophy, which may make your redness worse. From there, you can try topical Botox. So topical Botox can be injected intradermally. It's a little bit more, uh, what's the word? It's a little bit more finicky, but if you use the delivery system, for example, like your Aquagol, it can help. And how that works is that the Botox and botulinum toxin itself can modulate the blood vessels uh, within the actual uh, areas of erythema, areas of redness. So topical Botox can work. From there, you can try other energy devices. So other energy devices include things like RF or radio frequency microneedling, and that can help as well. But once again, those are less predictable, they're more costly, they have a longer downtime, and there's more pain compared to, for example, using specific vascular lasers. 
There's been a lot in the literature in regards to pigment lasers and how pigment lasers, yes, we're treating redness, the target for pigment lasers, as the name suggests, is your melanin, which is your pigment. But there's a lot in the literature in regards to things like pico lasers and Q-switch lasers, because what they do is they can modify your inflammation or they can modulate inflammation through cytokine release. In other words, release of growth factors and um, inflammatory mediators from top of your skin, which is your epidermis, which has a flow on effect, which may affect your blood vessels. So these are really clutching at straws. So just to summarize, PIE, super common. Number one, check this and you gotta check it. Make sure the acne is in control, it's in remission. Otherwise you'll be chasing your tail. Each lesion that you treat, another lesion comes out. And as you know, with these, with these spots and dots, it may take six to 12 months before the lesions go. So make sure you break that cycle, treat acne effectively, place it in remission. Number two, have you used your sunscreen? Make sure you use sunscreen as directed twice a day, regardless of sun exposure, a physical sunscreen over chemical sunscreen. Try, if you have skin of color, like myself, try to use something like um, a zinc, oh, sorry, an iron oxide or an oxide base because that can reflect blue light, which can decrease the amount of pigment, especially hyperpigmentation. From there, you can add your topicals, whether it be your vitamin B3 and niacinamide, you can optimize that using a 10 to 20% solution or serum. From there, you can add azalic acid. Um, from there, you can add your ascorbic acid as tolerated. From there, you can add your retinol, right? So those are the mainstay treatments. And then your bottom, your bottom line treatments before, after that, I should say, uh, include things like your compounded topicals. And then from there, your other energy devices and other physical modalities. Guys, I hope you liked that, uh, well, it's an 11 minute video. Uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Chime your thoughts on how you get rid of your PIE or post-inflammatory erythema. And I hope to see you again next week. Bye for now.